are obedient to him, he is so faithful to do the work. Amen? You guys ready today? Today my message is believe in miracles. And this is a message that the Lord has been dealing with me in for probably the past week or week and a half. I began seeing stories of miracles everywhere. And then you guys know we recently moved, right? It was two weeks ago yesterday. So I've been unpacking. And how many people know unpacking is not fun? But it's necessary. And I told you guys I like props, right? So as I was unpacking, I dug this out, and it says, believe in miracles. So here's my prop today. And as God was ministering about that, and then as I was moving, I opened another box, and it says, operating in the miraculous. This was from IGAP Conference, October 2017. I'm like, okay, God, I get it. Miracles. And we took this to intercessory prayer last Friday, was it, that we all met? And it was really powerful, but the Lord continued to contend and speak to me and confirm this word. So today we're going to talk about miracles. Amen? Amen? Have you ever witnessed or received a miracle? Anybody? Yes. A miracle is a supernatural event in the physical world that defies all natural laws or powers. It is literally the impossible done in the physical earth. And miracles are just so amazing. They just put you in such awe of our amazing God that he could defy all laws of gravity, all laws of nature, all laws of this world, and, and do the impossible. Amen? And I love miracles because they just stir up faith. They just um, prove God and who he is and how real he is. Isn't it amazing when you see a miracle? Um, and, you know, I was looking for the word miracle in the Bible because I thought it would be really cool to, you know, look it up in the Bible and see what it means. Do you know there's no single word in the Bible that's translated miracle? It's too vast. It's too amazing. It's too wondrous. But there are four words. There are four primary Greek words that they use that kind of translate as a miracle. And the first one is works, which is ergon. Sorry, I'll probably mess these up really bad. I don't speak Greek, in case you didn't know. Uh, the next one's wonders, which is teras or teras. Uh, there's powers, which is translated dunamis. And then there's signs, which is semium. Semium. So these are four words that we use in the Bible that kind of translate, but it's such an amazing word, miracle. How do you really just tie it down to one word, right? So we have works, wonders, powers, and signs. This is how it's translated in the Bible. And we know that miracles are found all throughout the Bible, right? Not just the Old Testament not just the New Testament, from Genesis to the very beginning when God, what, formed the earth. When he said, let there be light, and there was light. That was a miracle, right? And we can see it all the way, the Old Testament, all the way through the New. And, you know, I often hear people say they don't really believe in miracles. Or they say miracles are not for today. Have you guys heard that? Miracles aren't for today. Those were in the Bible times. Those were when Jesus was on the earth. But my Bible reads, I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We serve a God that never changes. So he is the God of miracles, and miracles are still alive and well today. But we might ask ourselves, why do we not, do you see them as often as you would like to? No. And I wondered about that. And I think there are several reasons for that, and I'll get into that um, in a minute. But the first thing I want to talk about is the purpose that miracles serve. There's a reason for miracles. And the first one is miracles prove that Jesus is the Messiah. 
they prove his lordship, that he is the son of God, that he is the father. Amen? So we're going to look in John chapter 20, starting in verse 30. And it says, the disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. So there were many other ones that are not in here on top of the ones that were put in here, right? But these are written so that you may continue to, everybody say, believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, everybody say believing, in him you will have life by the power of his name. How do we do miracles? By the power of his name. Right? There's no individual or person, I don't care how gifted, anointed, and loved by God you are, you can't perform a miracle. But by his power, by his name, the Messiah's name, at the name of Jesus, miracles come into our presence. Hallelujah. So part of the reason that Jesus did miracles, even for his own disciples, was, let me prove to you who I am. I am who I say I am. I am the Messiah. Okay? So that's powerful. Do, but wait, do you think everybody believes just because of miracles? No. And we're going to read real quick. I don't think I have this for you guys up there. Sorry. But it's in Matthew uh, chapter 14. And we're going to see how the miracles did not bring salvation. <laughs> It says in Matthew 14, verse 53, it says, when Jesus had finished telling these stories, he was telling the parables and illustrations. He left the part of the country. He returned to Nazareth, his hometown. Everybody say hometown. What's your hometown? Mine's SoCal. I was a Cali girl. You know, there's nothing like your hometown, right? Your people, your food, everything there. So he's in Nazareth. And it says, when he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed and said, where does he get his wisdom and the power to do miracles? Okay, so the people were in awe, like, wow, how is he so wise? And he has this amazing ability to perform miracles. Then they scoffed. He's just the carpenter's son. And we know Mary, his mother, and his brothers, James and Joseph, Simon and Judas. All his sisters live right here among us. Where did he learn all these things? And they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. See, some people are going to see the wonders, the signs, the miracles, the wisdom of a God, and they become offended. Oh, you're just a carpenter. Oh, you're just a stay-at-home mom. Oh, you're just an average, right? You're nothing special. And they scoffed at him. And Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own family. Isn't that the truth? We have nations, hello nations, that believe in the vision, believe in the church, believe what God is doing, yet people in this own city will scoff at us and not believe. How tragic. It says, and so he did only a few miracles there because of their own belief. So one of the reasons I believe that we don't see as many miracles as we would like to is because unbelief. There is too much doubt. There's too many uh, spectators, you know. Oh, that ain't real. Oh, they're doing some sort of magic. Oh, have you heard it? You know, I was a skeptic at one time. I'm not going to lie. You know, I'd watch these shows and miracles and people were being healed. And I'm like, wow, is that really real? Well, let me ask you, if you ask God, he will show you. You know what happened to me? I was at a church service and I woke up on the floor. God showed me because I asked him, is it real? It's real. See, if you ask him, he will show you. Don't scoff. Don't have disbelief. Don't doubt. You have to believe. Remember, he said, if you believe that we would see, it, it's connected to our believing. And in an atmosphere of unbelief, 
you're not going to see the miracles. Like he said, he did very few. You know, I remember one time there was a man that was in a motorcycle accident, and it was really bad. And somebody we knew knew them. I don't even know. But they contacted us, and they said, pastors, would you please come to the hospital and pray? And we said, well, yeah, of course we'll come. So I don't remember what UMC, I don't know. It was one of the hospitals here downtown. And we showed up, and there was, you walked in, and I mean, the smell of death was in the room. There was such a heaviness. And there was a bunch of young people in there just hanging out. It was almost like they were having a party in there, right? And I began, I, I, you know, we said, okay, hi, we're Pastor Sean and Jen. We're here to pray. And there was two young kids. It was their father. And he was hooked up to life support and all kinds of stuff. He was in really bad shape. And I wanted to pray, but the unbelief in the room was so bad, I could not. So I said, listen, we need to pray for a miracle. Do you remember? We need to pray for a miracle. And if you believe, then I ask you to stay. If you don't believe, then I'm going to ask you to leave. And guess what? Every single one of them got up and walked out of the room. Now, the miracle didn't manifest. We prayed. We believed. But, you know, I believe there was so much unbelief around, around that. And ultimately, God's will came to pass. Amen? But you don't want to be an atmosphere of unbelief if you want to see the miracles of God. You want to be an atmosphere of faith and belief. Amen? Amen? Okay, number two, another reason for miracles. Miracles bring salvation. There are some people that are such skeptics that no matter how much of the word you give them, no matter how much you try to tell them of the good news and the gospel, they are just not going to believe. So there are times in the Bible we see, and I believe there's times today, where God will specifically do a miracle just to reach somebody for salvation. Okay, let's look at John chapter 4, verse 46. And it says, As he traveled through Galilee, he came to Cana, where he had turned water into wine. Do you guys remember that miracle at the wedding feast? It says, there was a government official in nearby Capernaum whose son was very sick. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged Jesus to come to Capernaum to heal his son, who was about to die. Jesus asked, Will you never believe in me unless you see miraculous signs and wonders? The official pleaded, Lord, please come now. The official didn't want to talk about his unbelief. He's like, listen, my son's about to die. Can we just get over there? Ever had an emergency and you're like, God, I need a miracle now. Somebody's about to die. The situation is bad. So he just pleaded and said, Lord, please come now for my, before my little boy dies. Then Jesus told him, go back home. Your son will live. Wouldn't you be bad? Like, Jesus, I just asked you to come. And he's like, oh, just go home. He's going to live. And then the man, what? Believed. And the man believed what Jesus said and started home. While the man was on his way home, some of his servants met him with the news that his son was alive and well. How many people think that's good news? <laughs> Praise the Lord. And he asked them when the boy had begun to get better, and they replied, at 1 o'clock, his fever suddenly disappeared. Everybody say miracle. miracle. Then the father realized that that was the very time Jesus had told him, your son will live. Sometimes a miracle is just a prophetic word. He just spoke it. He did not go lay hands on him. He didn't go anoint him with oil. Now, he has done those in other times, but he just simply said, your son will live. That was it. But what made that miracle come to pass? The Bible says he believed. I wonder if he didn't believe if he would have gone home and found his son well. I, I strictly believe that miracle was tied to his belief. And Jesus tested him because he just told him and made him walk in faith there. He didn't go with them. He just said, no, you, you go look. You go home. Do you, do you trust me? Do you believe? Because he had just asked him prior to that, will you only believe if I show you miraculous signs and wonders, right? So now he was telling him, 
that's the only way you're going to believe in me? But he, he got tested, right? But after Jesus gave the word, he, he will live. It says he believed. And it says, your son will live. And he and his entire household believed in Jesus. Salvation came to an entire household. Why? Because they saw, the, they saw the sick boy. They knew he was about to die. And suddenly the fever broke and he is well. That was a miracle. And that miracle brought salvation to that family. So there are times and situations and places where God will perform a miracle because there are people there that need salvation. And that will be the thing that will, they will all just believe. They will say, God, we know that was you. Amen? Amen. And the third reason for miracles, there's many more, by the way. I'm just going to give you three today. Miracles are the fruits of faith. Miracles are the fruits of faith. Let's look at Matthew 9, 18. As Jesus was saying this, the leader of a synagogue came and knelt before him. My daughter has just died, he said. But you can bring her back to life again if you just come and lay your hand on her. So Jesus and his disciples got up and went with him. Just then, a woman who had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding came up behind him. She touched the fringe of his robe, for she thought, if I could just touch his robe, if I could just touch his robe, if I could just touch him, I will be made well. If I could just touch him, I will see the miracle of God. If I could just touch him, miracles will begin to take place. If I could just be in his presence. Hallelujah. 12 years she suffered. 12 years. And she was sick and tired of being sick. And she, she got so desperate for him. And she knew that he was a miracle worker. And she knew that if she could just touch him, she would be made well. She touched the fringe of his robe. First she thought, if I could just touch his robe, I'll be healed. Jesus turned around. And when he saw her, he said, daughter, be encouraged. Your faith has made you well. You see, with miracles, sometimes we are looking for a formula. Don't we like formulas? If I do A, B, and C, then I'm going to get my miracle. What are we learning through this? There is no formula. One hand, he said, go, he's alive. The next hand, he's following because he's going to go lay hands on. The next time, somebody just touches his robe and they're healed. There is no formula. It's faith that activates the miracles. And I think sometimes in our unbelief, we want the formula. So we try all the formulas, but the formulas don't work. Because there's no formula for miracles. It's strictly based upon your faith and your belief. And sometimes you got to do crazy things in faith to receive your miracle. And the world will look at you and say, you are crazy. What are you doing? But when you got to get your miracle, you are ready to do whatever the Holy Spirit tells you to do. I don't care if I look like a fool. I don't care what I got to do. I don't care how far I got to travel. I don't care what meeting I have to be in. I'm going to receive my miracle. Amen. Because when I get in the presence where Jesus is, miracles are about to take place. And the women was healed at that moment. When Jesus arrived, he was on his way to do another miracle, and he got interrupted on the way. But he didn't care. She was healed. When Je Jesus arrived at the official's home, he saw the noisy crowd and heard the funeral music. Everybody say doubt. They already decided she was dead. They already began the funeral music. They were already weeping. They were already full of doubt. When Jesus arrived at the official's home, he saw the noisy crowd and he heard the funeral music. Get out, he told them. Come on, what I tell the kids at the hospital room, get out. 
Why? Because in that atmosphere, there was not going to be a miracle. You're already playing the fu funeral music. You're already full of doubt and unbelief. Guess what? Get out. Get out of here. That's why I told the kids in the hospital room, get out. If you don't have faith in here and I need a miracle, you got to get out. So Jesus kicked them out and he told them, the girl isn't dead. She's only asleep. But the crowd laughed at him. After the crowd was put outside, see, with your unbelief and your doubt, you need to go outside. <laughs> However, Jesus went up and took the girl by the hand and she stood up. The report of the miracle swept through the entire countryside. After Jesus left the girl's home, the two blind men followed along behind him, shouting, Son of David, have mercy on us. They went right into the house where he was staying. Sometimes you need to go into the house where Jesus is, right? <laughs> I'm going to follow you. I don't know where you're going, but I'm going to be in your house. I'm going where you go. And he asked them this question. Do you believe I can make you see? Do you believe? And he said, yes, Lord, they told him, we do. Then he touched their eyes and said, because of your faith, it will happen. Then their eyes were open and they could see. I don't know, but if I was blind to suddenly be able to see, come on. The, come on. That's a miracle. When blind eyes open, when deaf ears open, when the lame get up and walk, come on. Those are the miracles that God will do. It says, then their eyes were open and they could see. Jesus sternly warned them, don't tell anyone about this. I wonder why. Maybe he got tired of people following him everywhere he went. He couldn't even go home. They were in the house waiting for him, right? He's like, look, okay, I gave you your miracle. You can see now, but just don't tell anybody about it. And let's see how obedient they were. But instead, they went out and spread his fame all over the region. <laughs> see, because when I get a miracle, I just got to tell somebody about it. Come on. I can't keep it in. I got to go testify of the goodness of my God and the miracle that he's done in my life. I can't be quiet. They weren't very obedient for just getting a miracle, right? Hey, they were so happy they couldn't contain themselves. I don't think Jesus was mad at them. So we see miracles, and that was a response to faith. And, you know, I was in a situation like this. And the Lord reminded me of this just sitting here in worship. I hadn't planned to talk about it, but my Naomi, um, when she was born, she had a pretty traumatic birth. Um, several hours of labor, um, which turned into an emergency C-section after 24 hours of labor. Um, I had a horrible time. She had a horrible time. It was just not a really good process. And after she was born, thank God, she was healthy and large. She was nine pounds, two ounces, and, and she was healthy. Um, they had told me I had some testing that she would possibly have Down syndrome, and she did not. Praise God. We rejoiced at that. Um, I almost lost her. I started bleeding at a, when I was about two months pregnant, and the doctor told me, you might have a miscarriage. There's nothing we can do. But we prayed, and there was no miscarriage. Then they told me she might have Down syndrome, and they tried to have me abort her, and I said no. I let him do every test except for the genetic one that would prove. And I said, I have faith, and I trust God. And no matter what, that's my baby. And so she was born, and she had no Down syndrome. But a couple days after she was born, I spent about a week in the hospital. And there was this man that used to come every day and he would wheel in this big machine, and he would come in, and he would hook Naomi up to this machine, and he was checking her hearing. And the first day, he really didn't say nothing. He just said, oh, I'm going to come back tomorrow. And we're like, okay. I'm a new mom. 
this pastor's third time around, but my first time around, and we're like, okay. Um, so we just waited, and the next day, the same man showed up with the same machine, and he came in the room, and he hooked her up to the machine again, and he said, well, um, technically, after the second or third time testing, she can't hear, so I'll have to send her to a specialist. He said, but I'm going to come one more time. I'm going to come one more time. And she could not hear. And, you know, the first day he said, well, sometime after C-sections, there's a lot of water. He said, but by this time, she should be able to hear. And it's not registering. She can hear at all, at all. And so that night, I cried and I prayed. And I said, God, please let my daughter hear. I don't want her to be deaf, God. And I cried out and I pleaded and I asked God and I believed. And the next day, which was about the fourth, fifth time, I don't know, they were checking her. And this guy, there was just something about him. He was so full of joy. He was whistling down the hallways. He was, I mean, he, there was just something about him. I know now he was a man of God. But um, so he hooks Naomi all up to the machine. He gets everything done. And he runs it to Hess and he looks at me and he says, Mom, well, what do you think? I said, my baby can hear. And he said, yes, she can. She can hear. And my God did a miracle because she could have been born deaf, but God made her hear. He did a miracle. And I know that guy was praying. I knew he had faith. I knew he was believing God with us. So I have witnessed miracles. I know God did a miracle that day for my baby girl. So we see people in the Bible perform miracles, but we see people today that perform miracles. There's people that have miracle ministries. They walk in the power of God. And so I sent myself on this journey. I'm like, what is it about these people? Don't you agree? People that do miracles are pretty special. They're different. There's just something about them. If we look at the people in the Bible, the Stevens, the Pauls, the people that did miracles, Moses, Come on, he was a stammerer. He was a, you know, had a hard time speaking. They, they tend to be special, but I said, God. So I went out on this journey to find about people that did miracles. Because if you want to do miracles, don't you think you should study miracles? Yeah. And the one thing that I found that was common, whether they're present day people or people of the Bible, is that they were all servants of God. Their life was dedicated to the Lord's work. They just were servants of God, first and foremost. Um, and Matthew 10, 8 tells us, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, give as freely as you have received. Do you know most people that worked in miracles received a miracle? And God told them, because you have received freely, freely give. So if you've received a miracle and have not walked in trying to bring miracles, you know when Jesus said the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few, do you know he was talking about miracles? Why are we not seeing miracles? Where are the workers? Where are the servants of God? Where are they? Because I guarantee you where they are, the miracles are. Number two. They were all obedient to God's will. You know that scary prayer, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done, where they literally laid down their life, every plan for their life, anything they believed and said, God, I'll just surrender and serve you my whole life. It, count the cost. If you want to walk in the miraculous and see the power of God, guess what? His will will have to be done in your life. Number three, they encountered God or had a supernatural experience with God. We know Moses, when he went to the mountain, right? He would, he would just, uh, 
have these supernatural encounters with the angel of the Lord and with God. He would even come down and his face would be shining, right? So there, there has been some sort of supernatural or um, experience or counter or maybe where they heard the voice of the Lord. And um, I was studying Oral Roberts a little bit. Anybody heard of Oral Roberts? Come on. He walked in amazing miracles. And his son um, is... Richard Roberts now, he uh, has an amazing healing miracle um, ministry. But um, I was listening to his testimony, and he said, at the age of 14 years old, he was really, really sick, horribly sick. He had some sort of thing that literally was killing him. He said he was in bed for five months. He could not even walk. And his brother came to him and said, you're going, there's an evangelist in town tonight, and you're going. He said, they loaded me up. He was laying in the back seat of the car to go to the evangelistic meeting because his brother, brother believed he was going to be healed and God was going to do a miracle for him. So he said, as he was laying in the back seat of the car driving there, he just, the Lord came to him. He heard the Lord and he said, I'm going to heal you. You will be healed tonight. He said, but... I want you to lay hands on people and heal them the same way I'm going to heal you. I want you to be my servant. And do you know he has gone to nations and laid hands on millions of people and seen miraculous healings and the miracles of God? Why? He was obedient to that call. And he received his miracle that night, by the way. He was completely healed uh, and received a miracle. And so we see that they usually have some sort of encounter, some sort of experience with God or the Holy Spirit, um, and that was really amazing. Number four, they were yielded and in tune with the Holy Spirit. I found that people that work in miracles have a special they are so in tune with the Holy Spirit, right? The Holy Spirit says something, they do it, and things just start happening, right? So we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. And, and, and I go back to this because, like I said, sometimes we're trying to work the formula. You know, in the Bible, it, it talks about Paul did unusual miracles. Do you know it said if people just had cloths that touched them, they would be healed? Just cloths that have touched them, they would they would touch their bodies and they would become healed. The Bible says that God did, God gave Paul unusual miracles. So you know what uh, ministries have done? They've taken cloths and tried to mail them to people to tell them they're going to heal them, right? And I'm not saying it never happens, but see, that was a special anointing. That was a special thing that God gave to Paul. And so we want to replicate it. But did we have the faith that Paul had? Did we have the obedience that Paul had? Did we serve God the way Paul served God? See, there's no shortcuts to miracles. Do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Are you yielded to the Holy Spirit? When he says move, do you move? I remember one time the Lord commanded us to go to Flagstaff, Arizona. We had a friend out there. There was a bad situation, and he said, you guys got to go pray. We took our kids out of school for the day. We went. We're in the room. Um, the mother is on the floor. She is crying, devastated. Her son had just tried to commit suicide. It was a terrible situation. There was such oppression in the room. We got the oil. We got the guitar. We began to worship. And, and, and the mother is broken on the floor, and she is just crying. And the Holy Spirit ministers to me, and he said, anoint her with oil. So like a good, obedient Christian person I am, I look at my husband, and I said, anoint her with oil. And you know what he said? You. <laughs> if God told me, or the Holy Spirit ministered to me, I was probably the one that was supposed to do it, right? So that's all I did. I got some oil out of obedience to the Holy Spirit. And, and I just said, I anoint you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then what happened next was crazy. There were shrills. There were yells. There was demonic activity and a mass deliverance. There was vomiting. There was, my kids were terrified. I still apologize to them because I had no idea. God didn't tell me you're about to do a deliverance. He just said anoint her with oil. But guess what? Whatever demon was there came out. Because why? I heard from the Holy Spirit do this. Do you know that's never worked again in another situation? 
It's not a formula. Almost every time I've ever done, done a deliverance, it's done in a different manner. The Holy Spirit will have me do different things, pray a different way. Um, some people I know with oil, some people I don't. You know, it's all about relationship. It's all about being in tune. It's all about hearing and obeying. And in that, we'll see the miracles. Number five, they have faith. The people in the Bible and, and people of today that walk in miracles are people of faith. Uh, Marilyn Hickey calls it bulldog faith. I love Marilyn Hickey, and she talks about the miracles of God, and she calls it bulldog faith. She was giving a testimony. She had a lump in her breast. It was extremely painful, really, really bad. And she began to pray about it, and she said she had this revelation. She goes, if I go to the doctor, they're going to give me medicine three times a day, two to three times a day. She said, but Lord, there's a scripture in your word that says your word is like health to my bones. It's like medicine. She said, so I'm going to take your word like I would my medicine. She said for 24 hours straight, every hour, she would get up and speak that scripture. Every And she said in the 24th hour, the lump was completely healed and gone. Why? She had bulldog faith. I will get up every hour on the hour, 24 hours, night and day. I don't care. I'm going to get my miracle. Amen. God responds to that type of faith that will not receive anything less than what God says and his miracles and his truth. Amen. Okay. Here's number six. They did not take the glory for the miracles. You can't work miracles. It's God working through you. He does it for his glory, not for ours. So if you want to do miracles so people will think you're amazing and awesome and powerful, well, guess what? No. God says he will give nobody else his glory. The glory is his and his alone. So every person that I saw that walked in these amazing miracles, they never took the credit for it. They always said, glory to God. I, there's nothing I can do. It's all him. It's by the power of Jesus. It's in his name that these things happen. We can't take glory for something we cannot do. And number seven, one thing I noticed among people in the Bible, people today even that do miracles, we read about it. Um, they were mocked, ridiculed, and despised. Do you remember when I said they laughed at Jesus? When he said, she's not dead, she's just sleeping. What did they do? They laughed. The other people, they scoffed at him, right? He was despised. And it's no different for the people. Do you know every single person that I looked up, whether it was Oral Roberts, oh, Catherine Kuhlman, come on, uh, Benny Hinn, any person that I looked up that walked in the miracles, every single one of them said, false prophet, fake. Uh, there, there was always negative comments saying that they were not the real deal. Every single one of them. So miracles are not for the weak. Come on. You're, there's going to be persecution. People are not going to believe you. They're going to come against you. But if you know the truth, it doesn't matter. And let's look at Matthew 9, 32 through 34 real quick. It says, when they left, a demon-possessed man who couldn't speak was brought to Jesus. So Jesus cast out the demon. Seems fair enough, right? Demon-possessed man, I'll just go ahead and cast that demon out. And then the man began to speak. Everybody say miracle. The crowds were amazed. Nothing like this has ever happened in Israel, they exclaimed. But the Pharisees said, he can cast out demons because he is empowered by the prince of demons. There will always be the religious. There will always be the Pharisees. There will always be the naysayers saying that, oh, you're working through divination, the power of demons, evil. It's not real. It's just something that people move in the miraculous face. If they said it about Jesus... You think they might say it about you? I say this to warn you. So when it happens, you don't have to explain yourself to them. You don't have to fight them. You don't have, don't worry about it. Just say, well, if it happened to Jesus, I know why it's happening to me, right? He said, even as I'm persecuted, you will be persecuted. Even as he's mocked and laughed at, we're going to be mocked and laughed at. It's okay. 
It's okay. So my question you, to you today is, do you believe in miracles? Do you really believe? Mark 16, 17 through 18 says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. These are the signs that follow those that believe. If you just believe. So I never, ever like to talk about the power of God, the miraculous of God, and never see it. So today is your, your opportunity. We're going to, do we have that song up there? Miracles? You were going to have it ready? Yeah. Aaron, you can play it? Okay, he's going to play Miracles. Okay, so there's going to be an atmosphere of worship, and here's what I'm going to tell you. I need an atmosphere of belief. I need believers, not doubters. I need people full of faith, according to your faith. And he said, and if you believe, nothing shall be impossible for those that believe. Amen? Nothing. There's nothing too hard for God. There's no miracle he can't do, but we have to believe. Okay? So this is what I feel in my spirit really, really strong. The first thing I'm going to do is if you're oppressed, here's part of the signs you're oppressed, you're tormented. If you feel torment, if your sleep is attacked, if you can't read your Bible, if you can't worship the Lord, if you have a hard time being in a church environment with believers and you feel anxiety, these are signs you're oppressed you're oppressed. You need deliverance. And if you believe today is your day of freedom, I want you to come right up here and we're going to cast out demons. We're going to get you free because God has called you to freedom. He said whom the son is set free is free indeed. Today is your day of freedom. God wants to set you free. So if you know this is you, get up here. Don't pass your opportunity because God is going to move. He's the God of miracles. Come on. I thank you because you stepped out. Many more are going to get set free because of your boldness today. And because of your boldness, God is going to heal you. He's going to deliver you. Are you ready? Elder, you have oil. I knew you were ready. The one who made the deaf to hear silencing my every fear, silencing my every fear. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. I take authority and I say, leave his You're the God of miracles. Come on, who else needs freedom today? There, there's no condemnation in Christ. I don't care how long you've been a believer. I don't care who you are. If you're being tormented, today is your day of freedom. Come on. Even if it's unbelief, even if it's fear, even if it's doubt, it doesn't matter. Anybody? Anybody? Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one who put death in his place.